no secret that humans are made for relationship. From the moment of birth and through all of life, humans seek some sort of hopeful connection, some sort of meaningful relationship for the lifespan. Being in intentional, supportive relationships has proven benefits for one's body, mind, and overall outlook on life. But believe it or not, a lot of gaps exist in the community between different generational groups. My name is Jeff, and I'm a senior nursing student at Seattle Pacific University. We have developed a program, the Older Adult Partnership Project, or OAPP, for connecting older adult volunteers with student nurses. We developed this program to foster intergenerational relationships. This has taught students how to interact with the older adult population. We are very excited about our results and are happy to share them with you. I'm Carol Redfield and I teach here at the Seattle Pacific University Nursing Program. In this project, the students are paired two to one, two students to one older adult for accountability and safety, where students are meeting with the older adults for over nine months, four to five visits max, and it's over um, usually a place where it's neutral, such as a coffee house uh, or a library, and eventually moving to the older adult's uh, home if they want to. Throughout the course, a bridge is built between the generations. Stereotypes are broken down on both sides. The groups learn to communicate and connect with one another on a deeper level. And most of all, both generations realized how far they had come in their ability to reflect on life and all that they had to offer one another. Stereotypes can be so damaging, and too often they keep people from entering into relationships that could be beneficial. Only once the younger adults and the older adults move past their personal stereotypes did they begin to accept the other generation. Amongst my peers, that um, some people didn't get the opportunity to interact with older adults previously, and so they were a little nervous. The students have come in sometimes with a stereotype. Before they get to see us, I guess, they've been in the, worked in the nursing homes or uh, some of those places and, and seen a different viewpoint of what people are like. I think it's great that um, you have a chance to see healthy older adults other than grandparents who may be older than us, maybe not, but um, you, you do relate to them in a different way. And you, as being nursing students, you certainly relate to patients in a different way. You do see the older generation that are ill and um, you aren't as in contact with those of us of the older generation who are still active. You just don't think of people that are in their 80s running around and doing all this crazy stuff and having almost as much energy as us. And so that was encouraging, I think, to see that as we get older, it's not just gonna slowly go downhill and we're just gonna sit around, but these people are super active and still contributing to their community. Coming into this OAPP program, I did have some stereotypes, mostly from media. I think, um, a stereotype of them being very into themselves, not very giving, not very, um, not really wanting to be out and in contact with people of other generations. It really uh, got my attention that they were really that interested in, in actually knowing where I was at and how, how just how I got there and such. And I also threw it back at them. I said, where do you intend on going? And so. It was kind of, kind of a cross relationship in that. The students gave me a very different perspective of students in general. Um, they had a real focus and a real goal, and that's where they were headed. It breaks down the barriers that, that we have stereotypes of what we think older folks are like and what we, we think what younger folks are like, and we find, hey, this isn't the case at all. And so, and when you build a friendship with, with the people and get a better understanding. Once both groups moved past stereotypes and approached this unique relationship with an open mind, they were able to engage and enter into a meaningful conversation with each other. Both groups were shocked at this connection and friendship. This allowed me to meet somebody in the younger age group that I don't really have contact with a one-to-one -one basis. And it's been pretty enlightening. I find that they're they're really open to conversation and we have fun together. We're meeting friends and having coffee and just talking, talking about everyday things and we really related on that basis, not as teacher to student or student to teacher. We hug everybody that comes in the house and they said, oh, okay, and so we give them all big hugs and then 
from then on, they it kind of breaks the ice, and the everybody has a good time after that. That first one is more of an introduction type type fast facet that we got to know each other, and the second time, well, they were more or less on a, a friend friend basis, and uh, then we're just like old friends for the third third or fourth one. We just had fun together. Yeah. It was always a fun session, an hour, sometimes two hours, say, yeah. depends. Just talking and. Even though a lot of it was serious, we always had fun, and we were always able to share our family and our lives with them, and they likewise did that with us. Yeah. It's nice to be able to anticipate having a conversation with someone. One of the, the best things about my marriage was the fact that we talked and discussed everything in the world. You get that healthy perspective of you're going through school, you're going through academia, you're going through life, and there's a person who's gone through all of that, has, uh, it can be a testimony, can be a witness to be like, I, I was in your 20s, I was in your 30s, it was a little bit different technology, a little bit different style of things, but I've gone through that and I can share to it and speak to it. So it was really great just learning from a student perspective and a, from a life perspective outside of academia. As you get older, you get wiser, and so, um, having them give us advice on where we are now I think is really cool and also just um, a lot of times they're able to see the big picture a lot more they're able to kind of put it in perspective and also just be there as a support for you I know our partner was always asking us how school is going what classes we thought were hard and just encouraging us through that they knew it was going to be friendly I think that's the important thing was was, was a one-on-one -on -one thing like they were family Reflection is the most important aspect of this partnership model. It serves as the marker of the effectiveness of the entire relationship. And in the case of the older adult partnership program, both groups walked away with way more than they were expecting. I think it's very important to interact with the older generation and just learn from them to be able to deal with the problems that this generation has right now. I always think of the little house in the prairie where the grandparents lived in with the parents and I think the grandkids learned a lot from the grandparents and I think today that's kind of lost when the grandparents are put into nursing homes and such and I think this kind of relationship we should have more of. I think there's probably should, could or could or should be more programs that would um, have the two actually meet and I think that would be very important for both. The intergenerational contact just allows you to see what real life is all about because every day you're dealing with people of different generations and it just broadens your horizon. I think my life would be really boring if I'm only um, interacting with people my own age. So the enjoyment of meeting younger people just gives me a fuller perspe perspective on everyday life. It gives the adult a kind of a fulfillment of knowing that they're helping the younger younger generation as they're starting out in, in their professional life, life and, or in their career, should we say. It is cool that it was a project, but it's something that's going to continue on and we'll stay in contact with him. We ultimately want our nursing students to provide quality care for older adults in the community and in institutions. Uh, part of the reason for this is because older adults are considered the marginalized population or they would say they're the invisible population where our younger um, people don't normally gravitate towards uh, a relationship with them. According to Dr. Thane Erickson, professor of psychology at Seattle Pacific University, both older and younger adults can expect to gain several benefits from a program such as this. In some studies, those who give support appear to derive even more mood and health benefits than those who receive the support. When people give to others with genuine motivation to do good, we find that it not only changes the perspective of the giver, but it also pulls for mutual giving from others. The beautiful thing about this sort of process is that one no longer can tell who is the giver and who is the receiver. There's been some win-win with this that we like to continue this program in the future.